Welcome back, everyone. So today we're actually going to discuss how we install lights on this building. And that has a, been a kind of a hot topic of questions that we've been asked. So let's jump into it and discuss it. All right, so one of the big issues you run into is mounting lights or anything on these panels when you're doing something like a red iron building or if you're doing a pole barn, anything that uses a corrugation. And what I mean by that is something that has this type of panel on it. This is a, what's known as an R panel, but there's also some known as AG panel. There's also PBR, quite a few different names. So it's all fine and dandy for the most part if you could get your lights to land out in the flat. I mean, granted, we still have a pretty big little low rib here. It's kind of hard to see in that color, but you can see it there. You could probably would be okay mounting directly in and caulking it, but it's not the best idea. So for us, luckily we have a machine shop, but we made blocks. So you'll see here, we've actually got these blocks that are cut and machined on the back side to match this panel profile. So that one fell out on the low ribs, but over here on this side, we actually are sitting on high ribs. So the big thing, we even have them like up, up top. We've got mounts for lights up there. And of course on the sides over here, on down we have some lights. The biggest thing about that is you need to find out exactly where you want your lights. Get your building put up, figure out where you want your lights at. That way you know exactly where your panel where it lands out on your panel. So if you need to, you know, some of these, you may end up having to machine the profile, you know, a half inch off center on the high rib or something of that nature. Luckily for us, most of ours fell out um, either with the high rib in the center or it split the low ribs. And this is nothing more, we'll get to it here in a minute, then you can do, you can get by with a two inch, I believe this one's a two and a quarter thick block. This is actually Nylatron. We had a ton of this material sitting in our shop so you might as well use the free stuff you know the stuff that we had so um let's jump inside and i'll show you some stuff in there all right so to give you guys an idea this is one of the blocks that we machined so this is a smaller one for a smaller um light mount but you can make them whatever size you want but as you can see we have the rib profiles machined in there. Like I said, this is Nylatron. Um, we had just a ton of this laying around. But let's take a walk outside, and what I'll show you is, real quick, you'll see when you actually take this and lay this up to this panel, look how good of a fit you get. So for us, it wasn't a big deal machining these. Uh, with the CNCs, once we get the profile, it's it's pretty quick. You could probably 3D print these as well. Um, the issue I think you'd run into on the 3D print one, it would take forever. Um, you definitely have to figure out really how you would mount them. So for us, what we ended up doing is we'd come in from the back side of the panel and we would drill a few holes through the panel and then we would drill and tap Actually, we use self-tapping screws. We would we would drill, pre-drill these, and screw these from the back side into the panel so it sandwiched it up really good to the panel. If you did a 3D print, I know most of that stuff's kind of honeycombed in the middle. I'm sure you could do a solid fill, but holy moly, that would take forever. You know, machining this stuff isn't that bad. The main cost here is the material. It's not the machine time necessarily, more so than the cost of material cost. We're getting ready to do another set for a customer of ours. He's actually building a barn dominium as well. So I'm going to go through and show you the machining process when we get to that on his and I'll let you see that. So another question you may have is, well, how do you get the wiring through? So for us, what we ended up doing is we came from the backside as well before we actually mounted them. And we put in, we drilled in and tapped it for a half inch pipe. And then basically went with a six inch or the other six inch or these are six inch we use on this uh, pipe nipples. Here you have the half inch pipe nipple coming through with a wire coming through. Pretty simple, easy to fish wire in and out if we ever have an issue or anything of that nature. The only thing I would suggest on the next set, which we're doing for our customer, 
is bumping up to three quarter. That's number 12 gauge wire. So it's a little bit tight. Getting, it's not tight getting through there, but if you're trying to fish a couple wire sets through it, it can be a little snug. So I would bump up to a three quarter on the next set and uh, call it done there. So aside from having just the screws coming through, you do have the three quarter inch pipe or the half inch pipe coming through your panel. What we did there was basically, I know it's a little bit hard to see, but we've caulked the top side of that we've caulked. And then we've also caulked behind it where we went around the tube there. We put some caulk around it just to make sure you know, it wouldn't come in there. And luckily it's holding up very well so far, but I mean, we're very early into this, but it was the best solution that we could come up with to solve the problem of mounting lights onto these buildings. We didn't want to go wood. We wanted something that was going to hold up to the elements, hold up to the weather. And like I said, aside from the material cost, which luckily we had a buku of it um, at our shop for us, uh, it was just the machine time, which wasn't really terrible. This stuff machines very good. It uh, leaves a pretty good finish. I mean, you're really not really worried about finish. You're more concerned with the fit against the panel more than anything. But yeah, I mean, it's probably not the cheapest solution to an extent. I'm sure you could use wood and, and get by with it a whole lot cheaper. But the reality is, is, you know, wood's going to degrade. I don't care if it's painted or whatever over time. So this should never go anywhere, should never rot, should never, you know, nothing should ever happen to it. So it'll be a long-term solution. And uh, honestly, it seemed to be about the best solution we had for, for doing this. So if you got any questions, hit me up in the comments.